So which exercise was the best? Well, actually, the question was misleading. And in fact, it was a very poor question to start with. And in this video, I want to explain why that we should stop these futile debates into the best, the better exercise. And I want us to focus more on the idea of exercise execution. And so this video will look at exercise selection and variation and how you can approach it to have effective, consistent, long-term results. Specificity of training relates to how specific your training is to your goals. How relevant are the exercises you choose and the way you perform them for the goals that you are training for, whether that's strength, hypertrophy, whether you're training for a sport and therefore uh, energy systems would come into play. So you have to think of the direct application of your training to your goals. And another huge variable will be your personal characteristics, your medical history, your joint mobility, your training experience. There are so many factors that go into specificity. And why do I start the video with this? Because specificity is key. And this idea that someone else in the gym is doing half squats, so they must be wrong, is completely ridiculous. We don't know why other people are training, how are, and therefore how other people are training to meet their goals. And so being, being judgmental on other people without knowing the full context of their training is slightly ridiculous in my opinion. If there was a gym t-shirt that needs to be printed, it would say specificity is key. So how do you select your exercises and why is execution and variation so important? Now I'm going to preface this information by stating there is no messiah in fitness. There is no PhD who is the all-seeing, all-truth-telling messiah of information. There are several incredibly intelligent PhDs within the physical fitness sphere. And I will mention a few of them in this video, but you have to remember that they agree on many points, but they also disagree on many points. So when you look at information, even my videos, I'm expressing ideas to you and I've tried my best to condense it and give you effective ideas from intelligent and well-practiced people. However, you must be critical with all information, including mine, and you must apply it to yourself using specificity. So Dr. Andy Galpin says, there is no such thing as good or bad exercises. It is all situationally dependent. And Dr. Galpin made a recent video on his YouTube channel. I've linked it below. Please go and watch him. He's outstanding. And he mentions uh, different variables for choosing exercises, such as your limb length, energy systems, your training, how it relates to your sports. Uh, also this idea of being I I ideal and realistic in your exercise selection. He talks about how he trains MMA fighters and so he won't use uh, Olympic lift snatches because their bodies are already undergoing so much, uh, uh, if you like, damage and, and they're battered from, from their regular training and their fighting that having these high impact sort of movements is not realistic for that population. So these are ideas of specificity. Some of the factors you can consider are the use of compound lifts. Absolutely, compounds are essential within programs. You can also look at the, the idea of training the movements and the planes of motions of muscles. For example, if you're training back, you, you have horizontal pulling, you have the vertical pulling, your external rotation. So that's another way you can look at choosing exercises is making sure that you know the movement patterns of muscle groups and you can work exercises that, that envelop those patterns. You can also choose exercises based on injury prevention. I've just mentioned external rotation for the rotator cuff muscles. So instantly those are a few concepts that you can think about for exercise selection. So exercise selection is important. Absolutely. Choosing your exercises and variation is important because we're looking at this spectrum of optimization versus adaptation and we cannot do both at the same time the more we are optimizing the less we are adapting the, the more we're adapting we're not optimizing but we have uh, different benefits however a major issue I see is this paralysis by analysis of what exercise is better than others what exercise we should do and it just gets to a point that I feel that exercise execution is what you should be focusing on. Program your training, choose your exercises, plan your macro cycles, your meso cycles and your micro cycles, 
and then just focus on your execution. Stop worrying about this new information about what is better or best or this YouTuber who's hand picking, cherry picking studies to try and persuade you of one thing or another. But one question you might have, well, what is exercise execution? You know, when you have exercises, they can actually be performed in different ways. You can have a, a narrow grip bench press or a wider grip bench press, or you can have an overhand tricep push down or an underhand tricep push down. Well, actually, strength and conditioning coaches and, and, and elite coaches would actually may view different hand positions and grips as completely different exercises. So, for example, a narrow grip bench press would be considered a different exercise to a wide grip bench press. And this is something that Dr. Mike Isratel talks about. And so when we think of execution, that's a good way to approach it. If we view them as different exercises altogether, then it kind of removes the confusion about, well, am I executing my bench press right if my grip is slightly wider than someone else? However, having said that, one variable for execution, which is important, is how you actually grip the bar. And we can look at the military press. And Mark Ripto has specific cues for how he grips the bar for an overhead military press. And so the way you actually put your hands onto the bar can be a variable for execution. And so I strongly believe in the idea that change equals adaptation. And we need to control on the spectrum where we are at points within our training. And this is something that strength and conditioning coaches understand. But this is, this can, this is lost within the general fitness population. And it is in a large part due to the information you're being given, especially by fitness YouTubers who have a biased agenda towards pushing certain forms of training to sell whatever they are, they are affiliated with. And so when we are selecting exercises, we create a yearly plan and we can create um, uh, mesocycles. Now let's say they're four week mesocycles. At some point we have to have some change. Now, this is something that, that pretty much is accepted within, within uh, elite coaching. Now, how often you have that change, how the change should look, well, that's highly debated. One point I want to start with is what is variation? But Dr. Mike Kisratel actually has a great point about what variation is. And let's take the example of a barbell back row, an overhand straight bar back row. Let's say we're performing it for four weeks and then the next mesocycle of four weeks, we change this exercise, we vary it. Doesn't mean we have to completely change the movement and the exercise. It doesn't mean we go from the barbell row to a one-handed dumbbell back row or a, or a cable back row because that would require a phase of relearning or a phase of learning or indeed a phase of reprogramming those motor schema to become efficient at the movement. And so you can actually lose some of that smooth transition in terms of your progressive overloading and your tracking from one mesocycle to the next. We can move from a barbell overhand straight bar row to an underhand easy bar barbell back row. That would be a variation. But as you can see, the exercises are very closely related. The actual transition can be extremely smooth and you don't lose time and, and training hours in sort of relearning and, and, and perfecting those movements. And Dr. Mike Isratel says, you get some really set in stone adaptations when you do sequential kind of stuff. So his sort of take on variation is to not vary too much. You'd have, ser you'd have several mesocycles of hitting a movement. Now, of course, you can change your reps, your volume, etc. That would be something you, you may tinker with. But having this sequential uh, hammering of these exercises to stimulate that hypertrophy and then, for example, changing your overhand back row to the easy bar underhand row. So when we think about exercise selection and variation, it will be fair to assume that changing your exercises too frequently could have a negative effect. Now, there are people that do that. There are people that change from microcycle to microcycle, one week to one week. But again, you have to look at specificity. And also, we can confidently say that not changing your exercise selection for, for an extended period of time can also be negative. And so we have that spectrum. And that's how delicate training can be. But also, as delicate as training can be, we don't have to be paralyzed by these ideas and we have to think about our execution. Now, of course, you have to consider the, the benefits and the limitations and you have to program. But it gets to a point where my advice to you is just ignore the noise and execute your plan.
execute your exercises and your repetitions. Execute your repetitions with a conscious peak contraction and a conscious stretch to recruit more motor units, to produce the force to create the adaptations and be consistent with that over time. So when you watch this video, I haven't given you the way that you need to program. I haven't told you that to train pushing motions, you need to do start with a barbell bench press and then you need to move on to your dumbbell bench press and then you need to use resistance bands. I haven't told you that. The key points are specificity. Exercise selection is important, but exercise execution is vital. And this idea that variation and periodization are also vital. So I'm James Linker. I hope this was useful. Shred is for science. I'll see you soon.